Hey guys, welcome to my in-depth guide on champion points for PvP. This video covers the basic and advanced tips and tricks I know about the champion point system. The timestamps are here as well as in the description below so you can quickly move forward if you want to. This video is to help newer players understanding all the complicated and dynamic topics pertaining to champion points. Overall, with a little explaining, it will give you a better grasp on what you need to focus on. I hope this video helps and let's get right into it. So. What are champion points? Champion points, or I like to call them CP, are just another leveling system after you reach level 50. Champion points add bonuses to your character to further reinforce your playstyle. Having correct and viable champion point allocations is very very important to the success of your build. Champion points shore up any weaknesses your build may have while also strengthening the stronger aspects. CP are account bound, meaning your points transfer to newly created characters. But you can't gain champion points on that new character until you reach level 50. Upon reaching level 50, your character will jump to whatever CP level you have. Every time you gain new CP, it cycles. So you will get one red point, then one blue, and then one green point, and then it repeats. As you gain more CP, your three max stats will also increase. So this includes the health, magic, and stamina. The more points you get, the more powerful you become. The cap for CP right now is 810. You can go past this number, but you can't spend those points into anything. Gaining champion points is rather simple. Basically, all you do is just play. If you want to see a guide on getting CP fast, check out this video. I'll be making it soon. So there are three different trees in the champion points. The red tree, it focuses on damage reduction. The blue tree focuses on damage. And the green tree focuses on sustain. Now that we have all the basics out of the way, Let's explain what each CP spec does and if it's worth investing in. So we will start in the red tree as it is the most important one to make sure you get right. So in the steed tree, we are looking at medium armor focus first. Medium armor focus increases your physical resistance while wearing five or more pieces of medium armor. This one is all right. While this may seem like a good one to invest in, there are betters that give you more damage reduction. Once you reach max CP, you might invest 10 points or less into this specific tree. So what is physical resistance? Physical resistance basically is armor that mitigates physical damage whether that be bleed physical poison or disease damage overall medium armor focus is decent it's not the main damage reduction you want to focus in so for the next one we have ironclad this reduces your damage taken against direct damage attacks this cp spec is very very important for pvp i run 81 into ironclad as most damage in pvp is direct damage this reduces your damage taken by 24 percent which really helps your tankiness so what is direct damage so direct damage is any damage that hits in a single hit whether it is insta cast like swallow soul or light attacks or it's channeled like dark flare or it's an aoe like proximity detonation this is all considered direct damage so for the next one we have spell shield this cp spec isn't very important as most classes get free spell resistance anyways. Besides, just focusing just into one type of damage doesn't help in PvP. You need a broad amount of damage reduction. So that's why you don't focus too much into the physical and spell resistance as you do into, you know, ironclad or a broad amount of damage. So what is spell resistance? Spell resistance mitigates spell damage that may be fire, ice, shock, or magic damage. And lastly, in the steed tree, we have resistant. This is another important spec as it increases your critical resistance i typically run 50 points here as i get at minimum 2500 critical resistance for my pvp builds for pvp this is a very high priority to invest in just like ironclad what does critical resistance do so at first we have to understand what a critical strike is a critical strike is when an ability attack does 50% or more damage compared to normal, meaning you can stack enough crit resistance to mitigate all or most of the bonus damage. So resistant just adds another layer of defense to damage. The next tree is the lady, and we're gonna look at light armor focus. So light armor focus increases your physical resistance while wearing five or more pieces of light armor. So again, physical resistance pertains to bleed, poison, and disease damage. Similar to how medium armor focus works, light armor focus really isn't worth a lot of points. In the next tree, you have Thick Skinned. Thick Skin reduces your damage taken from damage over time effects. Thick Skin is a very important CP spec to invest into. Reducing damage over time effects, regardless of if it's physical or magic damage, is always crucial to have. So, what is a dot? A dot is an ability that is applied to the target and deals its damage over time. It allows you to perform other actions while it does its damage. The next one we have is Hardy and Elemental Defender. So Hardy and Elemental Defender are basically identical to each other. I suggest making them both even so you can equally reduce damage received. 
These specs are the most important in the entire red CP tree as they give you the most vast amount of damage reduction. And for the last tree, we have the Lord. So specifically, we're going to look at heavy armor focus. So heavy armor focus increases your physical resistance while wearing five or more pieces of heavy armor. Just like light armor focus and medium armor focus, it does the same thing. Just make sure you have the corresponding items equipped. A few times I've had points into here and I've been in medium armor. So make sure you pay attention. For the next spec, we have Bastion. Bastion should increases the effectiveness of your damage shields. This is used in very niche scenarios. So since damage shields were changed, this isn't the main line of defense for most magic builds anymore. Overall, think of Bastion similar to light, medium, and heavy armor focus. It just adds a little bit of extra resistance. It's nothing crazy. But if your build is specifically around damage shields like magic sorks, I do suggest putting a few points. But if not, then 20 points or less is good enough. For the next spec, we have Expert Defender. Expert Defender reduces your damage taken from player light and heavy attacks. So I think this one goes overlooked quite often, and I think I'm gonna start investing more points into this. I feel like this can be low-key overpowered. A lot of damage in PvE is done from light attacks, so I'm assuming it could make a difference in PvP as well. Since most good players light attack weave, reducing that damage by 11% with only 18 points invested is a pretty solid trade-off in my opinion. And finally, we have quick recovery. So quick recovery increases your healing received. This is a very, very important CP spec to invest in, especially for stamina builds. So healing receive impacts any healing you get from other people, also including yourself because it impacts self healing. So quick recovery just adds a little bit extra healing. It's nothing special. You just use this for your last few points you have left. So here's my suggested CP for the stamina builds and magic builds. Now the CP is the exact same, but in the green and the blue trees, they're gonna be a little bit different. So I kind of wanted to keep the same form Format, so you guys know what you're looking at. This is kind of ballpark numbers you want to run at. This is what most of my builds are currently in the red CP. Now this isn't the end all be all, but this is a good guideline to go by. Next, we're going to check out the green tree. This tree deals with overall sustain of stamina and magic. And specifically, we're going to check out the shadow first. The foul increases the effectiveness of your healing reduction. When you could stack major and minor defile with a 45% healing reduction, it was so AIDS. That's not even including the CP either, but I'm glad they nerfed defile to where it's at least negligible. Regardless, this, this CP is still AIDS and it really is only good in duels. As for open world, fighting outnumbered, you do not benefit from the defile whatsoever, in my opinion. So next we have the shade. This reduces the cost of sneak. This is just plain and simple. If you plan on sneaking like a Nightblade or something, maybe put a few points into here. If not, this is probably the worst CP point in the game to invest into. Next we have Shadow Ward. This reduces the cost of block. This CP is very viable. As you get better, you will notice when burst is coming your way. So by blocking, you can mitigate the damage and reduce the costs of the block itself so this cp will pay dividends in the future and it'll make you way tankier ideally if you are a tank definitely push this to 81 points but if you're just a normal build i suggest around 49 to 56 points so next we have tumbling tumbling reduces the cost of roll dodge this is similar to shadow ward everyone roll dodges stamina builds definitely use it more than magic but regardless i still think it's a good idea to put at least 49 to 61 cp here so the next tree we have is the Lover. We're going to specifically look at Mooncalf and Arcanist. So Mooncalf is for stamina and Arcanist is for magic builds. For most of my builds, I run about 75 points in the Mooncalf if stamina and the same thing with Arcanist if I'm magic. These two specs are the most important. The recovery percentage in Mooncalf and Arcanist is multiplicative, meaning the higher base recovery you have, the more Mooncalf and Arcanist will buff your recovery. This is why the most recent buff to sustain Munda Stones like the Atronach and the Serpent are so valuable. The Serpent and the Atronach giving at base 310 recovery that could end up giving 500 to 1000 extra recovery based on your build. That's not even including sets that buff your recovery like Lich, but that gets into too much detail for this video. Next, we have Healthy. This one is similar to Mooncalf and Arcanist, but it pertains to health. Ideally, this is only good for health recovery builds, but for typical builds, I don't suggest investing in this spec. So next, we have Tenacity. Tenacity increases the magic and stamina your fully charged heavy attacks restore. This is another CP spec that is used based on preference. I don't like this CP tree as I have the heavy attack to get extra resources. Besides, I still feel like some heavy attacks I use with a staff or a weapon have gotten cl more clunky and less fluid in the recent performance updates. Keep in mind performance is in quotation marks. 
And finally, we have the tower. And we're gonna look at bashing focus. So bashing focus reduces the cost of bash. This CP spec isn't too important as most people don't bash for damage, but they do it for animation canceling. I wouldn't put more than 10 points into this as you can get way more bang for your buck elsewhere. Next, we have sprinter. This reduces the cost of sprint. This CP spec is okay. So I suggest putting 10 to 20 points into this to help your stamina sustain out a little bit for both magic and stamina classes. Next, we have siphoner. So when you deal damage with a light or heavy attack you decrease the enemy's health magic and stamina resource restore and recovery so this cp is rather interesting it's mainly used for duels but here's a little tip only put one point into this so why you may ask so this is considered a debuff meaning it can be cleansed so when you light attack someone so it puts a siphoner debuff on them if you're fighting a templar and they cleanse they could cleanse the siphoner debuff rather than cleansing a dot or another debuff you don't want them to cleanse. So it can add passive pressure to them without any significant CP consumption. And finally we have the Warlord. Warlord reduces the cost of break free. The CP is very important as in PvP all you do is get stunned. This is basically on the same level with Tumbling and Shadow Ward for importance. So here's my ballpark CP for the green tree for both magic and stamina builds. This is just a guideline for CP allocation. I do change my CP points very often, but this is to give you an idea of what is the most important in the green tree. So finally, we are at the blue CP trees. So these trees pertain to increasing your damage. So we're going to start in the ritual with the spec Thaumaturge. So Thaumaturge increases your damage done with damage over time effects. Ideally, this is obviously used for a build that uses several dots. Basically, if your main damage is dots pump this up to 40 or more but if your dots just add a little pressure maybe just about 20 or so if you have no dots then obviously don't invest into this tree next we have precise strikes precise strikes increases your critical damage and critical healing with stamina abilities this cp is very solid for stamina builds not only is the critical damage nice but the critical healing also helps as well on a side note, if you're using Malakath's Band, definitely take this down to about 11 points because you can still buff your critical healing, just not your critical damage. Next, we're looking at Piercing. So Piercing increases your physical penetration. It's just plain and simple, just adds physical pen. This CP spec is helpful, but it's not a must. So you can use about 30 or less points into piercing. So next we have Mighty. Mighty increases your physical poison and disease damage done. This is the second most important blue CP spec. This really beefs up stamina builds damage, but don't invest any points into this if you are a magic build, unless you are running some type of hybrid or something. This is a very important spec as it increases all your typical stamina damage by a significant amount. Next, we have the Atronach, and we're gonna look at specifically Physical Weapon Expert. So Physical Weapon Expert increases your damage done with light and heavy attacks for two-handed, one hand and shield, dual wield, and bow weapons as well as in werewolf form. The CP tree isn't too valuable unless you are a werewolf. Other than that, I don't suggest putting any points into here. The light attack damage is negligible compared to other damage increases. Next, we have shattering blows. Shattering blows increases your damage done to enemies with a damage shield. Unless you have some sort of hatred for sorks, the CP investment is a waste. If you hate sorks, then go for it. So next we have mastered arms. This increases your damage done with direct damage attacks. This is the most important CP spec as it increases your direct damage. Most damage in ESO that is bursty is direct damage. Therefore, 72 points is a minimum in my opinion. So again, any damage that hits in a single target, whether it's instant cast like Swallow Soul, or it's channeled like Dark Flare, or it's an AoE like Proximity Detonation, this is all considered direct damage. So next we have Staff Expert. This increases your damage done with light and heavy attacks for destruction and restoration staffs, as well as overload. Overall, this CP is similar to Physical Weapon Expert, but the thing is magic builds rely more on the light attacks than stamina builds do and it also increases the damage of overload if that's your thing depending on the build staff expert can get 20 points or so and finally we have the apprentice and we're going to look at elemental expert so elemental expert increases your flame frost shock and magic damage done this is similar to mighty but for magic damage it is very important to invest in it as it is the second most important in the whole blue cheat for magic builds for pvp Next, we have Spell Erosion. So Spell Erosion increases your spell penetration, just like Piercing, but for Magic Build. Magic Builds benefit more from penetration, so I would suggest putting 20 to 30 points into here to beef up that damage. Next, we have Elfborn. 
Elfborn increases your critical damage and critical healing with magic abilities, similar to Precise Strikes as it increases the critical damage and healing of your magic skills. This is the third most important CP for magic builds. Finally, we have Blessed. So Blessed increases your healing done. Now this does affect your tooltips. It's kind of different than Quick Recovery, but this does affect the healing you do to others and to yourself because it buffs your total healing. Ideally, 27 points is minimum for me to beef up my healing. This goes for both magic and stamina builds. So here is my ballpark CP for the blue tree for both magic and stamina builds. This is just a guideline again for your CP allocation. I do change my CP very often, so just keep that in mind. But this is to give you a rough idea of what is the most effective and important CP to invest in. All in all, champion points are a very big deal. I hope these little tips and tricks help you guys out in PvP. I know this was a ton of information, but I hope you guys learned something. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me down in the comments. And if this video helped you in any way, please consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.